347-757-5375. And we'd love to hear from you. By the way, uh, we thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned into Guts, Gospel United Save, bringing you the information needed for transformation within South Florida and all over the world. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V, and we're here Monday through Friday, Monday and Friday, Monday and Thursdays, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here with uh, Rob Landon's University Dodge live show with the Reverend Ronald Young. And then after that, uh, 10.30, uh, tune in for Guts, Gospel United Safe. This week, interview with Undisputed Proof. We thank God for him. He's going to be at our baby contest at the Fort Lauderdale Church of God in Christ. Love to see each and every one of you there. 744 Northwest 12th Avenue in the city of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. With well, the senior pastor is Pastor Roger A. Grimes. Associate pastor is uh, Pastor Bishop Lewis Smith. And uh, the Church Mothers Board president is Mother Yvonne Driver Brown. We do thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast. And all men calling all men on Tuesday night to meet at the Fort Lauderdale Church of God in Christ. They're going to have a great men's meeting. And I tell you, if you're a man who wants to understand manhood, what to do, how to be a, a good man, a true man, a real man, uh, that's the event for you. It doesn't cost a thing. Just the only thing it's going to cost you is you getting up, going out, and being in the building. Real men praying, teaching, talking, meeting, having real talk. 744 Northwest 12th Avenue in the city of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's Fort Lauderdale Church of God in Christ, formerly known as Arthur Hall Memorial or AHM Kojic. And we do thank God for, again, each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. Now, we told you we were going to talk about these three uh, things, uh, three storms that are predominantly inward and not outward but cause us to crash in our attitudes. And one is the fear of failure. The first inward storm is the fear of failure. Now we have had many ways of dealing with this particular storm. Some people determine if at first you don't succeed, destroy all the evidence that you ever tried. Uh, you know, that's sometimes we have to do it. Failure, we hide it, deny it, fear it, ignore it point blank we hate it we do everything but accept it by acceptance I don't mean resignation and apathy what I mean is understanding that failure is a necessary step to success the man who never made a mistake never did anything you know what's really kind of cool is reading about the lives of great men one consistent fact that I've noticed when you read about all successful people Walt Disney I don't know Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, I don't know, many different men and women who have been successful. They all experienced failure first. In fact, most of them began as failures. They tried and tried and tried again until they got it right. When the great Polish pianist Ignacy Paderewski first chose to study piano, his music teacher told him his hands were much too small to master the keyboard. He would never be any good. When the great Italian tenor Enricio Caruso first applied for instruction, the teacher told him his voice sounded like the wind whistling through the window. He could have quit then, but he kept going. When the great statesman of Victorian England, Benjamin Disraeli, attempted to speak in the parliament for the first time, members hissed him into silence and laughed when he said, Though I sit down now, the time will come when you will hear of me. Henry Ford forgot to put a reverse gear in his first car. Thomas Edison spent $2 million on an invention which proved to be of little value. Very little comes right out of right the first time. All of us face failure. Failures, repeated failures, are the fingerprints on the road to achievement. Abraham Lincoln's life could demonstrate that the only time you don't fail is the last time you tried something and it works. We can fail forward 
toward success, but we must continue to fight. Let's talk about Abraham Lincoln and his uh, biography of failure. He had a difficult childhood. Uh, if, you, if you're out there, I'm sure many of you are raising your hands, shaking your head, and nodding, and everything else. Difficult childhood, that's me. I, I've had a difficult childhood, dysfunctional family, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Uh, and so, yeah, I fall in that column. Uh, less than one year of formal schooling. Oh, yeah, I know some of you out there are probably thinking, yep, I could put a check mark in that box. I had a bad family life and, quite frankly, dropped out of school because I just couldn't continue to do that. I had to get a job and I had to become a man of the house. I had to make sure that the provisions were made. I, I, I couldn't really uh, get the education that I should have been got or should have gotten. Failed in business in 1831. Defeated for legislature in, 19, in 1832. Again, failed in business in 1833, elected to legislature in 1834. Fiancé died in 1835, defeated for speaker in 1838, defeated for elector in 1840. Married a wife, a burden, 19, 1842. Only one of his four sons lived past the age of 18, defeated for Congress in 1843, elected to Congress in 18. 46, defeated for Congress in 1848, defeated for Senate in 1855, defeated for Vice President in 1856, defeated for Senate in 1858, elected President in 1860. Lots of problems, lots of failures, lots of you can't make it. Many of us would have quit, would have said, this can't be the will of God for my life, because if it was, it would be easier. God would make my path easy, would make it simple. Why should I struggle against this? I need to turn and change and do something else. Abraham Lincoln did not. Accepting failure in the positive sense becomes effective when you believe that the right to fail is as important as the right to succeed. Now, John Maxwell enjoyed the weather in San Diego more than in uh, Southern California natives. Why? Because... Well, he lived in Ohio and experienced the winter of 78, not to mention a few others. Most people seldom value their good health until they become ill. Exposure to problems gives greater joy in our progress if we can accept failure as an important process in reaching our goal. Knowing that you've failed before helps you to know that you have had success. It's impossible to succeed without suffering. If you are successful and have not suffered, someone has suffered for you. And if you are suffering without succeeding, perhaps someone may succeed after you. But there is not success without suffering. Ask Jesus. Now, a few years ago, while uh, John Maxwell was speaking in Dallas, he took a poll among church leaders asking this question. What keeps you from building a great work for God? That was the question he asked. What keeps you from building a great work from God? Now, the number one answer, the number one across the board, church leaders now, I'm not talking about lay folk, I'm talking about church leaders, fear of failure. Now, immediately he began speaking to leaders about failure. His closing message at a large conference where pastors had seen and heard success stories was on flops, failures, and fumbles. The total content of that 45-minute address consisted of all his programs that had fizzled, all the things that he tried and didn't work. The crowd laughed hysterically as Mr. Maxwell openly confessed, his many mistakes and why he had just admitted failure and given everyone in the audience permission to do the same it's a sigh of relief it's a breath of fresh air it causes you to say you know what I might not have it right every time but I know one thing I can brush myself off and keep going a good man falls seven times but picks himself back up so you gotta you gotta keep struggling you gotta keep fighting you gotta keep pushing you gotta keep pressing you are going to be a success but you can't let failures put you in a tailspin and say maybe this is not for me maybe this is not what I should be doing what you ought to do is pick yourself up brush yourself off and try again I once listened to Reuben Welch, author of We Really Do Need Each Other, speak the same liberating truth. He talked about how when we're merely concerned about survival and maintaining the status quo, 
we strive for a reputation that stifles progress and becomes, well, self-limiting. After hearing uh, that message, I had a plaque made that said, I don't have to survive. Our Lord not only taught this truth, but he also demonstrated it. He said that dying, not living, was the key to effectiveness. Oh, I know I just hurt somebody. I felt, I felt it. I felt you just, just say, oh my God, no, she didn't. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls unto the earth and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, if it dies, the emphasis on if it dies is on from me, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it to eternal life. John twelve twenty four and 25. Proof that Jesus Christ even says, you ought to be ready to give it a try. You ought to take some risk. You ought to, you ought to let it go. After a few chapters later, we read how Christ demonstrated this truth at Calvary. He became a visual example of his words. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. Certainly the survival syndrome was not a part of Jesus' life. He wasn't trying to survive. He was making effort to succeed. The Apostle Paul understood this teaching by saying to himself, of himself, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered me himself up for me. I'm going to leave us with that thought. I'm no longer just trying to survive or just trying to live in this life. I'm not trying to just make it. It's time for me to really give God my all. Until next time, this is Nikki V saying, have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I quit asking some people how they're doing. I'm glad you asked. I got a sebaceous cyst on my back here. My wife, Pearl, tried to lance it with a lid from a can of tuna fish. You want to see it? No, I don't want to see it. No, I really don't, but I figure if God's watching me, the least I can do is be entertaining. You know, I try to find a bright spot in everything. There are people, though, they've made a career out of being unhappy. No matter what you talk about, no matter who's in the room or how much money they have in the bank, they never seem to have happiness. Well, my friend, replace it with joy. Joy provides the peace that happiness can't. And by the way, joy doesn't need happenings. Joy comes from the Lord. This is Jamie Ragel. For real, for real. For a dose of good medicine, invite Jamie Ragel to speak at your special event. Go to reachtheplanet.org. WEXY, Wilton Manors, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. A service of Multicultural Broadcasting Incorporated. He was raised in faith and the values of family. He served us in the United States Army with valor. He's been an example to our youth as a teacher and coach. Alan West now serves us in Congress, fighting against policies that are tearing apart our communities and families. Alan West, he shares our values, faith, family, and service. Alan West for Congress. Black America's Political Action Committee is responsible for the content of this ad. The following is a paid program. The views and opinions expressed are those of the advertiser and not necessarily those of WEXY or its management. This is the Monday edition of Wayne Park's Radio Ministry coming to you from the full Gospel Church in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Stay tuned for 15 minutes of Bible Deliverance. tonight you need it now somebody else needs God to deliver your marriage because it's headed for the rocks tonight God is getting ready to establish some